Hi, this is David Monacturo. Welcome to video 3C, which is the third of four devoted to the topic of markets and products for the 2012 FRM. And that means we continue with three chapters assigned in 2012 from John Hull's textbook, the eighth edition. I've mentioned previously that if you don't have the eighth edition, that's okay, especially in regard to these part one chapters. If you have the seventh or even the sixth edition, they have not changed dramatically. So we're looking at swaps, properties of stock options, and trading strategies involving options. And learning spreadsheets associated with these concepts include 3C1, a workbook that has two worksheets, one where we take John Hull's example of an interest rate swap and perform that valuation. Another sheet performs the valuation for a currency swap. And then each of those get to the same answer from two perspectives. First, treating the interest rate as a bond or as two bonds and then as a series of forward rates. And so 3C1 is instructive in the sense that this interest rate swap combines several of the building blocks and it's a good exercise to give you a concrete understanding of some of the tools in finance. Now, the exam is unlikely to ask you a an interest rate valuation, an interest rate swap valuation question wholesale from soup to nuts just because that would take too much time. But the exam does like to test on some of the components of that. So it's still useful to understand the interest rate swap valuation. 3C2 is a pretty simple spreadsheet, builds on the Black Shoals and well and builds to the Black Shoals as well and uh, then illustrates the put call parity that's really so fundamental to uh, option pricing and just perspectives on options. And then C3, 3C3 is a workbook with several sheets that illustrate uh, most or if not almost all of the uh, different trading strategies illustrated in that John Hall chapter. And so chapter seven on swaps. We're asked to first explain the mechanics of a plain vanilla interest rate swap. And so that by plain vanilla, we're going to refer to one counterparty paying a fixed coupon and then in exchange for that, receiving a floating rate coupon. That means the other counterparty is in the opposite position, right? If we are the counterparty, if we imagine us on one side paying a fixed rate and receiving a floating, then our counterparty is receiving a fixed rate and paying a floating rate. And so elements here in this illustrated swap are, first of all, the notional principle. And now I sort of prefer just notional here in the case of the plain vanilla interest rate swap because it reminds us that there's not an exchange of principle. Um, but a whole uses notional principle, so that's as okay. The key point is that we've got that notional term in there. So we do need a reference and that's a hundred million in this case. And then the swap agreement could be pay a fixed rate of 5% and receive LIBOR as the floating rate. And in this one, it's a three year term with payment every six months. And so you can see here's the mapping uh, because of three years with payment every six months, we have six periods and LIBOR at the start of the period is 5%. So a key feature here is that when we first start the swap, the, the counterparty who's paying floating knows what they're going to pay in six months. So if LIBOR is 5% at the start of the swap, we can call that time zero. We go forward half a year to that first exchange of payments, the counterparty here who pays fixed is going to pay half of the 5% because we're six months into the year of the notional 100 million. So 5% times 100 million is 5 million divided by two is 2.5. And we're signifying this perspective with a negative sign. And then this counterparty is going to receive floating based on the 5%. So notice the swap at inception time zero, LIBOR is 5%. That determines that first floating rate payment six months later when there's the first exchange. And so they know that at time zero. And you also notice the pay fixed counterparty here signifying the negative for the payout flow. That's also known for the entire term.